Welcome back, everybody, to the most exciting time in human history. This was actually a pretty big week in the AI world, so I'm going to give you a high-level overview of everything today so you can stay up to date on all of the happenings. I think we're starting to come out of that summer slump that the tech world feels and really get into some exciting updates. So first up, if you haven't seen my video that I released yesterday, I go over my first impressions of this new GPT-4 Omni Mini Mod. Essentially, this is a model that is very competitive with other cutting-edge, smaller-level models. It's super fast, it's pretty dang smart, and it is very, very cheap. Not gonna get into too much detail. Just to give you guys the highlights, this model has an 128,000 token context length, so obviously not on the bleeding edge, but still pretty dang good. 16k output tokens per request is pretty darn impressive though and i would say that is absolutely cutting edge for you api developers out there it's going to be 15 cents per 1 million tokens of input which is really cheap and 60 cents per 1 million tokens of output which is also very very cheap that's equivalent to about uh 2500 pages in a standard book uh for 60 cents <laughs> now a lot of people in the comments of my video yesterday said this this is pretty boring, but I want to point out some reasons why it's not. This is a 99% reduction in cost in just two years. So if you thought AI was slowing down at all, well, you got to remember, if you've been keeping up with AI, we're kind of living in a bubble. 99 reduction in cost in just two years for the same level of intelligence, if not better. Not to mention the model is also natively multimodal, which is not something that we had two years ago. I also thought this really interesting interesting point by AI for success here on Twitter was very notable. In the future, GPT-40 Mini and, of course, GPT-40 will not only be able to generate text and audio, but also images and video outputs as well as accept those as inputs. Again, natively multimodal in all of these different formats, that is a big deal. It's available for free and paid users in ChatGPT and, of course, the API. And honestly, I think this is a much-needed upgrade over the very old GPT 3.5. That's right. Thanks for tuning in and supporting the channel, guys. Oh, and really quick, guys, before we dive any deeper into today's video, a quick word from our sponsor. I'm sure that it's no secret to you guys that generative AI is changing the way that we create content. AI can generate new writing, audio, art, video, all based on human inputs and prompts. It is insanely powerful stuff, especially for one-man band creators like myself. Now, harnessing this power of AI can be a little bit daunting, but thankfully HubSpot's got us covered. They've got a new comprehensive free guide on using generative AI to scale up your content creation. A good prompt is the key to directing an AI's output. What I really love about the HubSpot guide is that it clearly lays out not only the fundamentals of how to prompt, but also provides you with some useful examples that I thought would be especially good for beginners on page six. I'm sure you also know that AI is sort of a magic wand, but of course it does have its limits. And understanding and learning about those limits is crucial for creating genuinely valuable AI content. That's why Page 12 of HubSpot's guide, in my mind, is so important. It clearly covers AI limitations and how they can be circumnavigated, like AI's inability to conduct original research or provide lived experiences. Even if you've been following AI since day one, I genuinely believe there is some value in this HubSpot guide. Who knows, you might learn something new, and it's completely free. Click the link down in the description below to download HubSpot's free guide on scaling content creation with generative AI. I think you'll be surprised. Sponsors are the reason that I can pursue this channel full-time as a career, so thank you so much to HubSpot for sponsoring today's video. Now back to your regularly scheduled content. Welcome back, folks. So next up, I want to talk a little bit about OpenAI Strawberry. So this is essentially a new type of model that OpenAI is developing with the aim of allowing artificial intelligence models to not only generate answers to queries, but to plan ahead enough to navigate the internet autonomously and reliably perform deeper levels of research than they are currently able to do. This is a pretty big deal, especially if you just watched my sponsored segment where we talk about one of the main drawbacks of the current AI models is its inability to perform reliable deep research. So this would be a big step up. This is undoubtedly something that would be available inside 
inside of GPT-5. In yesterday's video, I spoke about my predictions on when we might see GPT-5. I think it would be early Q1, Q2 of next year. So don't hold out for GPT-5 anytime soon. Just know that this is not a confirmed rumor, but some speculation that OpenAI might be working on some sort of technology that allows better understanding, deeper research, and more autonomous actions and thinking. I certainly hope that this is true. Next up, guys, the long-anticipated Llama 3 405B model has now been added to open router AI. It also has a hugging face model weights page attached. So as Hassan Khan points out in his tweet here, the release must be very close. In my own personal research and my own personal looking, I will say that I have heard some insider information that we are seeing this model very, very soon, as soon as possibly next week, and that it will be fully open source, which is great. That means anyone can manipulate the model, anyone can learn from it and build upon it. And 405B, that's not necessarily something you're going to run on your computer at home. I mean, most people can't even run a 70B sized model, but this elevates the entire field of AI as a whole. Open source large language model developers are going to get a big boost from this. They're going to learn a lot from this model and there's going to be some really awesome fine tunes of it for specific use cases and tasks. This is a model that's going to be competitive with the cutting edge open AI models, the cutting edge anthropic models. This thing is no freaking joke. The fact that there's a hugging face model weights page is an even better sign that it's going to be fully open source. And even more exciting news from Meta here. This comes from Andrew Karan here on Twitter. Llama 4 started training last month in June. Llama 4 is going to be fully multimodal, including audio, just like GPT-4 Omni is. And if it's open source, that's even more exciting. I mean, imagine those cutting edge multimodal capabilities inside an open source model that's freely accessible for everyone. That gets me freaking excited. There was also some speculation that Llama 3405B won't release in the European Union, but from this, it appears that it still will release in the European Union, but Llama 4 and beyond might not be because Meta wants to be able to use European Union Facebook and Instagram posts in their training data. Now, that's where things get a little bit tricky. Lots of divisive thoughts on using people's data, but I'm not going to provide you with my personal opinions on this. Feel free to leave yours in the comments. What's really great as a whole, though, we're getting confirmation on Llama 4. It's already in training. According to Andrew Karan here, the only reason that Mark Zuckerberg said they stopped training Llama 370B was, was so that they could actually start training Llama 4. They are on the ball, Meta is moving quickly, and they are super competitive. I'm really impressed with the way that Meta has handled the whole AI large language model situation. It is pretty incredible what they've done. In terms of a release date, Andrew Karam provides his guesses here. By the way, this is a phenomenal AI account. If you use Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, follow Andrew Karan. But he is taking a stab at a guess saying that 405B is going to be this month, this week, next week. It's, it's going to be very soon, as I also said. And then he thinks Llama 4, we're going to see November, December, same time as GPT-5. I think we're going to see GPT-5 a little bit later, a little bit more towards March-ish. But that's just me. For Llama for? I don't even know if I have any predictions. Probably similar time frame to GPT-5, though, I, I would guess. And continuing our large language model steamroll here today, Apple actually dropped a 7B model, which is a very lightweight model. This is a model that can run on a lot of consumer-grade graphics cards, consumer computers, your computer you might be watching this on right now could probably run this model. This is a 7B model that is better than Mistral 7B, which is a previous top competitor, and it's fully open sourced, complete with the pre-training data set, which is like, man, from Apple? That's really surprising. So kudos to Apple for doing this. Here is the hugging face space itself. Here you can see the model card files and versions, etc. for this brand new DCLM 7B model. I think that this could be a model that is running on maybe even the new iPhones to support Apple intelligence. It's pretty lightweight. 7B is pretty small. So maybe they found a way to effectively run it on those devices, iPads, iPhones, etc. But like I said, I'm really 
really, really impressed that Apple actually open sourced this. This is great for the AI community and developers as a whole, and it is a very competitive model, mind you. And by the way, Sean Ralston here said kudos to Apple. He works for OpenAI, so again, this is also a pretty great AI account to follow here on Twitter slash X, whatever. So next up, coming directly from Cocktail Peanut himself, the legend, Pinocchio 2.0, which is a big update refresh to Pinocchio. And if you don't know what Pinocchio is, essentially it's the easiest way you can run a lot of different AI apps on your machine locally for completely free. This is a rethinking of how offline web apps and AI apps should work. These apps that are going to run locally on your machine will be indistinguishable from normal websites. It's going to be frictionless, which means zero click launch, essentially very easy to get up and running. And finally, now they have the ability to turn your local machine into a public web service that other people can access. So this will make it a lot easier for people who are maybe starting to develop AI apps or just want to share little AI projects to actually show off what they've built. Here's a quick list of the highlights, but like I said, Pinocchio is a phenomenal app if you want to run things locally on your own machine. It's probably the best, to be honest. I, I don't think there's anything that really even comes close. Auto start scripts, customizable apps, radio file system. If you've used Pinocchio before, definitely give this thing an update. And I'm probably going to look into doing a full video on this in the future because that's how exciting it is. The ability to just have a powerful machine and then go in and run all of these new AI apps for completely free is absolutely a game changer. It essentially allows you, if you invest the money and time into having a computer that can run it, it allows you to stay ahead of the curve and try stuff when it first comes out. And you don't need to know how to code. You don't need to know how to install stuff. It's very, very easy. Next up, we got something coming from Fall AI, which I actually just talked about earlier this week with their Aura Flow open source image generator. Live Portrait actually has a real time demo that can use your webcam and then of course convert your face and control this other character or avatar. It's pretty darn cool. I thought I would point it out to you guys. You can upload any photo you want as the initial image and then just essentially control it in a very realistic way with your face. It's a live portrait. So guys swapping my webcam over to the website and then uh, turning it on over here we should be able to start yeah, kind of controlling uh, Michael here. It's a little bit strange, but yeah, this is real-time inferencing. It's it's pretty impressive. It's a little laggy for me right now, I think, but yeah, I can turn into someone that is way, way more attractive uh, than I actually am in real life. And dang, I think that just, uh, I think that might've just got more true. All right, it is not working with my channel logo for some reason. Oh, there it goes. And it's working with this uh, anime character dude I had lying around. Not too bad. You can see it gets a little bit morphed and weird with the hair, but I thought that this was a pretty fun demo, so I would just uh, show it to you guys. It's a little bit laggy, honestly. It doesn't look like it does in the, in the video, but it's still really fun, and it's really cool that you can do this stuff in real time. So next up, Eleven Labs has also released a new lighter weight, faster model similar to OpenAI. This is their new Turbo 2.5 model that generates much, much faster, and 27 other languages, including Hindi, French, Spanish, Mandarin, can now be generated a lot faster in Eleven Labs. Eleven Labs, for a long time now, has been kind of the leading text-to-speech provider. They're very quick, their API is great, and they can clone voices, plus a ton of other features that Eleven Labs supports. They have music generation coming soon, they have sound effect generation that's also pretty good. So I'm not going to go too deep on this. Just know that multilingual, fast quality text-to-speech generation has gotten even cheaper and even faster. And finally, guys, Midjourney might be coming to Grok pretty soon. Now, there's two AI Groks out there. There's one with the K and then one with the Q. The one with the Q is like fast AI processing. We're not talking about that one today. We're talking about the one that is here on the X platform, the Grok AI developed by Elon. I honestly kind of forgot that Grok existed entirely. I used it a few times, didn't really impress me, especially nowadays. It is not that competitive. Competitive, but image generation, if it is indeed mid-journey, would be pretty cool to see directly integrated inside of the X platform, and I wonder what they would do with it. And guys, this rumor has been floating around for quite some time. I mean, all the way back since February, there have been talks about mid-journey possibly partnering with X. Out of everything that I've talked about today, I think that this is kind of the least important or least interesting, so that's kind of why
why I put it all the way at the end. But I don't know, could you guys think of some interesting use cases, some interesting ways that both Midjourney or Gronk could be becoming better, sharing the same platform together? I, I don't really know. If somehow you can get Midjourney access for cheaper by including it with the subscription or something like that, I guess that would make sense. Maybe newer Midjourney features, newer generation capabilities. I do know that Gronk does have some interesting UI capabilities with its large language model that you don't really see any anywhere else, so maybe it could be something like that. Let me know what you think, but uh, thanks for watching today's video. It is a pretty jam-packed week, honestly, for AI. Like I said, I think we're starting to kind of come out of that summer slump. Things are going to start to get very interesting, especially when that Llama 3405B model comes out. I can't wait to give that thing a test and see how it compares to the cutting edge models, the Anthropics, the open AIs. I think we're still in for a wild ride. Just because things get slow for a little while in the summer does not mean that AI is done by any means. Trust me. This is very powerful technology and it's not going anywhere. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video and goodbye.